what is the purpose of COVID? Why, why is COVID happening? And what's your opinion on vaccines? Great question, very valid question at this moment in time. So COVID has got nothing to do with what appears to be happening. What is really going on in truth is there's a major shift of consciousness taking place. And it's perfectly scripted by the mind that is aware of the process that one needs to go through in order to reveal the self. Every individual being, including the entire world, has to go through an unraveling, an undoing. And COVID is actually perfectly scripted as a process of undoing. Now, of course, the ego mind wants information. It wants to know what's going on, who created the virus, how was the virus made, you know, who's to blame, because of course, ego wants to blame someone, take a side, attack, justify. And what's really happening underneath one cannot make sense of the illusion with the same mind that is creating the illusion. So COVID is a perfectly scripted um, story happening in what appears to be time. Um, and it's actually happening in what is the ending of the fifth cycle of time. So what is really happening is that it's it's given the spirit beings that have projected into this world, um, the spirit beings that are beyond the fifth level of consciousness, an opportunity to fully dissolve the ego body mind identity and awaken to the self. So COVID has forced us to face the idea of death, the idea of death as an illusion, since the true divine self does not die. Uh, the body appears to die, but the true self is eternal because it's made from the same essence. It's created from the same essence as God, as our divine source. And so what's really going on is COVID is actually an external representation of the collective dreaming mind that is incarnated in this realm called the world. The virus is actually a beautiful representation of the virus of the ego mind, the attack virus. If you look at the global mindset, if you take a step back and look at the globe, you know, if you're an alien in a little green alien, you know, craft with two little aerials in your head and you look at this world, you go, this, this world, the people of this world believe that they're overpopulated. They believe there's too many people there. They don't, they believe in scarcity. They, they believe there's not enough food. They believe in global warming and global cooling or whatever the case may be. They believe that they are destroying their environment, not realizing that the world goes through its own cycle of time. And, and at best, we can influence the world slightly through the destruction that we do, but take mankind out of this planet and they'll recuperate and return to perfectly normal within a 20 year period. So COVID is just really a representation of a fallen mind in which there is a virus, a ego identity. Ego is the virus, an active attack thought system. So because we believe in scarcity, the mind has created the appearance of a virus that is now attacking us and can kill us. What it also shows is the belief in mankind. Mankind believes that we are separate bodies. And therefore, we believe that bodies can die. So everybody's fearful of dying or that their loved ones are dying because we do not understand the reality of life, that life is a continuous, eternal experience, and that it's just the formless which projects into form, the formless spirit being projecting into form, returning back to the formless as a process of remembering what it is through the experience of what it's not. So... The virus is just a beautiful representation of what is existing in the collective mind. Now, let's take it to the individual separate body mind self. If the body mind self believes in the virus and believes that the virus could kill it, 
what you believe and you're in resistance of or resistance to what you resist persists. So the virus will then in some way affect you, whether it affects you by getting affected by it, infected by the virus, and it then makes you ill. Um, it will, you are attracting into your, into your experience that which you fear the most, because what you resist, you fear, and what you fear, you resist, and therefore you're attracting, because you attract into your experience not what you want, but what you truly believe and put your belief behind. And so if you're focusing on the fear of the virus, you're attracting it to you. Yet it's also giving you the perfect opportunity to step above the battlefield, to step above the body-mind identity, to realize the self, the eternal self, the eternal son of God self, which lives eternally. And so the virus is nothing more than a representation of the collective mindset. Yet as an individual, as you dissolve that identity with death, the virus won't affect you. If it's your time to go, you're going to go, whether it's virus or not. And the same thing applies to the idea of a vaccine. So if you believe that you're a body-mind, a physical body, you'll believe that something can cure you. But if you realize the self, then you realize the self cannot be harmed. And you'll also then have full faith, full trust, full knowing that the self is sustained by the love of God, by the grace of God. And therefore, you know, you don't have to fear a virus. Um, you don't have to take a vaccine. Now, that said, for the record, if you believe you should take the vaccine, and you believe you're being responsible, then by all means, take the vaccine. But if you believe that you'll be fine without it, and that you're not affected by it, and you're not infecting or affecting anyone else, then you choose not to. However, don't take the vaccine and worry that the vaccine is going to adversely affect you and may kill you. Its side effects may kill you because then you're attracting that experience. In the same way, don't say, I'm not taking the virus and live in fear of the virus because you're attracting it anyway. So whether you take the vaccine or not, just choose to be present in the self and know that that self lives in grace and is always taken care of. And this virus is simply, you know, again, the programming, it's going to come by 2023. You know, there will be, have been various mutations, so-called mutations of the virus, second and third phase of it. But what it's really doing is it's taking those that are beyond the body-mind identity into the true self-awareness, where the body-mind identity is being dissolved in this adverse time it's forcing us to stay home. It's forcing us to really reevaluate our values, our beliefs, our understanding. It's calling forth the experience. The self, the Holy Self, the Holy Spirit self is calling us to return to awareness. And what is happening in this period of time as we enter into the age of Aquarius, um, we're coming to the end, we're at the end of the fifth cycle of time, which means that a third of those spirit beings that have projected into this world, a third of this world will no longer need to reincarnate in this dense plane of duality. Don't go into fear now. It doesn't mean that a third of the world's going to die and only the awakened ones. It'll mean you'll play out your script. You'll go when it's time to go, whether it be in the next year or 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever, when it's your time to go, you'll go. And when you finally return to the spirit world, you will no longer have to incarnate in this plane of duality. You may still project incarnate into other planes where there's less dualistic experiences. But those of you that fully, those of us that fully realize the self, move into that Christ mind awareness, the awareness of being aware, the awareness of I am, will then move into Christ's mind where the separate body self dissolves in the light of its awareness. And even the separate spirit being identity dissolves and all that is left is the soul, that self which is fully awakened, the, body, the spirit body mind dissolves and the true self I am returns and reunites with the awakened part of the mind, the Christ mind. And, and, there it's one. So the, the separate body self is no longer alive. There'll be no memory of a separate body self. There will just be that awareness of the Christ mind, the awareness where the son of God remembers that he is dreaming. 
and we'll then enter, you know, by the year 2067, we enter into the sixth cycle of time. And the two thirds of what's left in this world in terms of the asleep um, spirit beings that are projected asleep, they will then have another 12,000 year cycle of time to reawaken. And 12,650 years from now, to, from the year 2067, will come the next cycle of time where they'll have the opportunity to awaken again. And then again, it'll be one third of this of the projected beings will then no longer need incarnate. It'll go through then the seventh cycle of time, which will be, will be the final cycle of time. And that, that final cycle of time, which is roughly 25,000 years away, um, the, the projection of duality will end and the son of God mind will awaken to the full realization that this entire thing was a dream. And what you'll have is a dissolving of the mind dream. It will be the end of this experience of dense duality. 